a few weeks ago, Don did a lesson on on ghosts. Um, I took Carol to work last night uh, because of the weather and dropped her off. And on my way home, I was listening to the radio and and the radio program was talking about ghosts and supernatural beings and things such as this. And it's a regular program, and but the person that they had on was uh, a person that had been that had studied in a seminary for ten years and claimed to know the Bible inside and out. And uh, the the uh, show host tried to get him to. Uh, admit that there were ghosts. He said, well, there are beings that are out here, but he says, I don't call them ghosts. He said, well, what do you call them? He says, I call them non-persons. That was a new one on me. Non-persons. They're entities, but they're not, they're not ghosts. But they're out here. And they live in, in uh, what was the term he used? Um, alternate universes. Alternate parallel universes was the term that he used. And they come through these vortexes, these electromagnetic vortexes, and they come and they'll talk to you and they'll give you instructions and tell you what they've been doing and, and, and such. And everybody that is a person in this universe has a non-person in this alternate universe. And just because you're dead in this universe doesn't mean that you're... you're alternate person is dead in that universe. And I'm sitting here going, where in the world did this come from? And this is a person that supposedly has studied the scriptures for 10 years, devoted to nothing but study of the scriptures, and is putting this out here. And the reason that I bring it up tonight is because there are people with these, these deluded, delusional ideas about what the scriptures say. Not once ever did he quote any scripture. But he would say, well, it's in the Bible. Um, he was asked about reincarnation. And he said, well, no, it's, it's not a reincarnation. It's, it's, it's their non-person. And the, the show host said, well, you know, I was in this, this one, this haunted house at this one point and, the, and never did figure out what they're talking about. Something about a ghost box, some type of a device that allows them to talk to ghosts. And the, the sound comes out of this box. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. It's not real. And they said, you know, the ghost that we expected to find in this wasn't, wasn't who we expected to find, who was some woman that had been murdered in this house some 40 years ago. It, says, it turned out to be Humphrey Bogart's second wife. And he said, well, how do you know it was his second wife? He said, well, she told us that. And she told us about all the fighting that they did and everything and, and how she wished now that she had just didn't have as much violence in her life. And she hadn't been, wished she hadn't done as much drinking as she had done. And it was just a, a bad situation, and she just regrets it now. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, these people that claim this, and he says, you know, and an, another situation is where you have a spirit that's, say, 4,000 years old, and they can't be cast out because. Uh, if you if you try to cast them out with the name of Jesus, they don't know Jesus because they're older than him. And I'm thinking, where did, where did this come from? You know, when you go to Hebrews chapter nine, verse twenty seven. Hebrews chapter nine, verse twenty seven. The writer of Hebrews here tells us that as, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Humphrey Bogart's second wife, I don't believe it. It's simple. 
when you go, when you die, then you have the judgment. And this being older than older than Jesus, so he wouldn't know Jesus, a spirit. You know, Matthew chapter twenty eight, verse eighteen. Okay, this is pretty simple. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power or all authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. All authority is given unto, unto Christ. Now, is there a ghost that could be cast out by calling on Jesus at this point in time? No. It would be a miraculous event. It would be something that would happen outside of nature. It's not natural, supernatural. It would happen outside of nature. And if this is happening on the earth, who has all authority? All power. It is Jesus Christ. So do these events happen? No, they do not. If we look at Luke... Luke chapter um, chapter 16 the story of uh, the rich man and Lazarus beginning in verse 19 there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels unto Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest the good things and likewise Lazarus the evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us, and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify of them, lest they also come unto this place of torments. Abraham said unto them, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went from unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, although one rose from the dead. When somebody comes out and tells you that, well, this is Humphrey Bogart's second wife and, and she, she wished she hadn't have done all these bad, evil things and that she wished she could have changed and, you know, and used that to change other people. That's exactly what Jesus was talking about here. It didn't happen. Neither, well, how did he put that? Let me go back to me. If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded that one rose from the dead. 
To sum it up, if we look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie, that they all may be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God will allow us to believe what we want to believe. That doesn't make it true. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't mean that what somebody out here is, is claiming is the truth. Oh, I read it on the internet. It must be true. We've all heard that expression before. What is truth? John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus, praying to the Father, said that his word is truth. If it disagrees with the word of God, it is not true. We have to know what's in the scriptures. We have to read it. We have to understand it. We have to rightly divide it, 2 Timothy 2.15. Rightly dividing the word of God so that we can have that home with him in heaven. Tonight, if you've never put on Christ in baptism, that invitation is open. If you have and you have sin in your life, that sin must be repented of. If it's public sin, it must be repented of publicly. That invitation is open as well. If you simply need the prayers of the church because of difficult times in your life, we invite you to come as we stand and sing the song that's been selected. Jesus is tender.